to uh, YouTube gamers. We're basically marking time right now, enjoying a little bit of sap while we wait for uh, Cine 2 Nerdle to come back at some point today. It may not come back at, at some point during the stream today, maybe later than that. And that's the, whatever. You got to think about these things on a long time scale. We can always do Cine 2, new, uh, Cine 2 Nerdle battles tomorrow if that's when they come back. For now, we're just going to have fun. It's the week before Christmas. Nobody wants to work these days except me. Um, we're starting our conversation today. Worst Christmas song? I don't know about that, but here's what I will say. By the way, I know nothing about this this weekly yet. Um, worst, most overrated Christmas song, in my opinion, Jingle Bells. There are adults who, if you said, what is your favorite Christmas song, they would say Jingle Bells, which is crazy. If you're like six, that's totally fine. But if you're like an adult, that's crazy. By the way, Dio the, the least observant uh, financial analyst. One moment, please. My webcam is not right because my computer went to sleep and my light turned off. Give it a second. Whoa. I got it. I look bright as heck, man. I don't. I can't even look at it. It's, I don't know. It's, how many lumens is this thing? Okay, I hate this shop, but I don't know what the weekly is like. Maybe the theme of the weekly is uh, one HP units, in which case a mosquito would go crazy. Sure, and I'll be like an elderly musician, like uh, almost all of them these days. Doesn't really make any sense. You know, it's Monday. We're getting started here. Christmas songs I enjoy. Um, well, I, any, any Christmas song that like tries to be a song, I'm okay with. Like I saw someone say Jingle Bell Rock is overrated. I'm like, maybe it's overrated, but at the same time, it's like, at least it's a song. You know, it has like a song structure. We'll do this. Like, Jingle Bells is like, I don't even know what to describe it. It's, it. I'm not trying to be, you know, pun intended here, but Jingle Bells is kind of like, it's more like a commercial. You know, it's like four seconds of the same phrase repeated over and over. I admire a Christmas song that at least tries. Toad. Toad has got some good stuff, but Sheep is pretty good too. You know what? Let's see what we got first. A second toad. In that case, I think we'll go sheep. Sell the horse. Add a toad. And hold. Please do not speak to me about uh, the best Pentatonix Christmas songs. I'm saying that, like, I'm not offended that you like Pentatonix. You will be offended by what I say when you tell me that you like Pentatonix. And you'll be like, why is this guy so toxic? It is the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. La 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 la. And I'll be like, well, you did it to yourself, honestly. Just, just being honest with you. Not trying to be a hater. If you don't want me to say negative things about Pentatonix, there's an easy solution. Don't bring them up. Now, I do want to say, I think Pentatonix are extremely talented at what they do. I just think that what they do is extremely annoying <laughs> to me. <laughs> so, it's not like I think that they're bad singers. In a way, if they were bad singers, it would actually be like a little bit more interesting. It's the fact that they're so pitch perfect 100% of the time that it's kind of like, it's not, I don't even, I like in my head, I'm like, you're showing off, but I don't care. Sorry, I know, I know I said I wasn't going to get into it. I got some deep-seated... Yes, yeah, someone said theater kid music. That I didn't want to insult the theater kids, necessarily. But there is part of that for me, for sure. There's almost like a... You know that scene in Step Brothers where they're all singing Sweet Child of Mine in the car? That's kind of like what Pentatonix is, is like to me. But they're doing it like genuinely. Like from a place that this is like authentically the music that we want to create. It's not like a Adam McKay, Will Ferrell movie. But if you like it, then that's fine, okay? We're going to the damn moon. Give me another one. Oh, the mad lads actually did it. You know what? For the moment, let's rock one of these. Let's 
excuse me? This shouldn't be allowed. Doesn't matter, it's a 10 piece, I think. My uncle who works at Cine2 Nerdle says it's coming online at noon. Incredible news. Tell your uncle I said hello. You're a good lad. We do have pills. We have pills. Do we have chocolate this week? We have chocolate. We have chocolate. We have pills. I should be buying bananas. <clears throat> when are you going to play Sap versus? Um, well, I'll tell you what. If I was going to do it, it wouldn't be this week. Because all the point dexters who normally work at like wastewater treatment plants are off right now. So I do not want to play super auto pants against uh, the kinds of people that are still playing this. They haven't moved on to Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, etc., etc. All the normies have evacuated the ecosystem. There's like a, a rock, paper, scissors type thing, okay? Um, there's probably a, what, what would you call it? A triplanar equilibrium? I beat the normies. That's my like place in the ecological web. The normies beat the nerds. Not in the game, but like in real life. Like I'm not saying like even from the position of like, um, you know, making more money, but like eating at cooler restaurants, you know what I mean? Having more swag. And then the sweat lords beat me. So that's the way that the, the washing machine goes around and around and around. Unfortunately, we have removed the normies from the ecosystem. They're all watching Home Alone 2 Lost in New York right now. All that's left is me and the sweat lords. As a result, I have to remove myself from the ecosystem so they can bother each other. No. Yes. That's a big one. I'm going to say, who am I going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to say we go full scalar mode. That's when you, oh, <laughs> probably should have grabbed that. That's when you give the money to Beneki or something. I don't know. By the way, I got a, a, a great washing. Okay. Big snipe in week. I'm realizing. Um, I got a goaded washing machine tip for you that it, I've been doing my own laundry for a long time. Okay. But, uh, I got a tip that you may not be aware of. Give your laundry an extra cycle just on spin. You know, I, I've got one of those newfangled washing machines where you can like download washing routines from the internet and then like upload them to the machine and do your own custom wash. I've, I've said I'm not gonna interface with that. I'm gonna click normal start and it's going to run for as long as it's going to run. Then one time my clothes were like a little damp when I was pulling them out of the washing machine. And I was like, you know what? I look, took a look at some of the buttons for the first time ever. I said, what about just a regular, an extra spin cycle on top at the end of it? They came out like 95% already dry. You throw them in the dryer. They're coming out like it's papyrus. It's so dry. You will never, I, and I, wasn't very common occurrence for me to have, uh, you know, like damp laundry coming out of the dryer to begin with. But instead of doing a dryer, like, you know, one and a half cycles, sometimes if your clothes are damp, do an extra spin cycle instead. It'll save you on your utility bill. And your clothes will come out crispy, bro. I guarantee it. And that's the bottom line. I'm going to try you, but I do feel like our team is losing the snipers, which is very annoying. What the f <laughs> Give one pet the durian perk. Reduce the most healthy enemy by 33% health before attacking once. Interesting. Very interesting. You could also air dry the clothes. You can, but I find air drying annoying. And I like, trust me, I've been through, I, I've had a house when I was a kid that had the clothesline that was like attached to a tree 30 meters away. And it had one of those like Sylvester Stallone cliffhangers that you would like. 
And then in, um, in Korea, they didn't really have dryers when I lived there. So you got like one of these, it's like a saw horse with rails on it. And then you would hang up your clothes like that. The problem is like in a humid environment, uh, your clothes don't dry well. And then oftentimes they kind of stink like mildew, which is disgusting. Now, we air dry some of our clothes. Some of our clothes get like ripped up in the dryer or like shrink in the dryer. But for the most part, I'm, I'm a dryer man personally. And that's the bottom line. Bro's doing crowd work about laundry. <laughs> what can I say? They say speak about what you know. What's crazy is that people are eating it up. <laughs> if I can't dry it, I don't buy it. I'm with you, but you know... I don't really have anything else to say about it. I, I feel like all clothes should be made to accept the dryer. But at the same time, you know, some of my nice clothes don't do well in the dryer. So, you know, you just hang, hang them up on the banister or something like that. It's not the best from like a, an interior design standpoint. But at the same time, you, you know, you take the good with the bad. What about your suit? I just simply don't wash it. I only wear it once a year, so I just assume that like any bacteria that's growing on it, like it probably gets like really, really big. Like uh, the colony gets enormous inside of the suit bag. But then like a couple of months later, they completely run out of like medium and then they go extinct. So it's actually like... I just kind of let it burn itself out. Yeah, 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 exactly. Just like the ancient scholars said, time cleans all clothes. Spawning weekly. Spawning weekly? No, no, no. It seems sniping and scaling weekly. Spawning is fool's gold. I had to wait 10 minutes to say this, but thank you for the pentatonics catharsis this morning. Yo, I forgot I have 10 minute. Is, is it 10 minute follower only mode? I forgot I think I put that on like three years ago or something like that. It is? It's your stream? I know I don't worry about the moderation settings unless... A major corporate brand wants me to crank up the auto mod to level four so people can't tell me to shut up. I bet Kate does the laundry. Who's the sexist now, motherfucker? It's like the most sexist thing I've ever heard. No, 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 I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, 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 okay. Well, you said it like that, so... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Also, uh... If, if you are a man, um, just do your own laundry. It's literally like the easiest chore of all time. You can't, I, I, I like, however you divide the labor in your house is fine, as long as everybody's on the same page. But the laundry is one that like, I, I simply can't accept if you're like, I don't know how to do it. It's, you literally put something in a machine, press a button, walk away, come back in like 60 to 90 minutes, open it up, put it in another machine, press basically the same button and come back in 60 to 90 minutes. The only annoying part is folding. But I mean, you gotta do that anyway, cause you gotta, you know, put something else through the laundry at some point. I don't know what I'm doing here. We don't have any level ones. You, you gotta go. I don't know what you're gonna get replaced with though. Probably not an eagle. Probably, maybe like a mongoose. Yeah, but how long have you been doing your own laundry? I don't know, since I was like 17 and I went to college. I thought it was like a rite of passage, bro. I thought college, at least my young man's understanding of college was like, it's okay if I'm 16 and I don't know what I'm doing. You know? 
college is where you kind of take an accelerated course in figuring out how to like survive at least a little bit on your own. That's where you learn how to cook. That's where you learn how to budget. That's where you learn how to grocery shop effectively. That's where you learn how to do laundry. That's where you learn how to, you know, whatever. It's where you learn how to receive important mail in the post and respond to it, you know? We got people in chat that are like, they got like seven degrees and they still don't know how to cook. And I'm like, how did that happen? Like what, first year, okay, you get, you get the meal plan most of the time. What happened after that? I don't understand. Ramen? Wait, do people really not know how to do their laundry? Dio Guiga, it's a wild world out there. Once you leave the ivory towers of Chicago and Vancouver, people are going, they're loving every minute of it, Jerry. They're loving every minute of it. Let me think about this for a second. You got to be out here. The skunk is the most important. You should come out here. You should give coconut gun to the bison. And then just send out something ignorant like this. Let's add a little, a little bit of sniping to the team. How'd the Canucks do last night? You even got an axe? Trounced them. Destroyed Chicago. Chicago beat, no disrespect, the Guiga. Destroyed them. Four to three. <laughs> Is Connor Bedard a bust? The streets are saying maybe. The streets are saying maybe. I'll take my seven. On the first run, I'll take my seven. No, they aren't. They're not. They're not saying that. But what did he get? Two assists? Embarrassing. <laughs> Is 4-3 really a trouncing? Safe bet. I mean, that's 33% more goals. You stack that up over an entire season, that's historic. I'll be like a grabby eggplants. Is Quinn Hughes the best defenseman who's ever lived? Yeah, he's probably like the fourth best defenseman in the NHL right now, but I'd say he's probably the best defenseman that's ever lived. I think if he keeps playing as well as he's playing, the New Jersey Hugheses are coming here, not the other way around. I would have assumed that it would be impossible. Now I'm like, it's, it's this bet the house. It's guaranteed. Think the Grizzlies have a shot now that Ja Morant is coming back? No, the Grizzlies are clearly washed. I mean, they gave a tribute to... Um, Dylan Brooks, which is crazy because he plays for the Shanghai Dragons now. Um, I think it's crazy. A lot of the stuff that's going on in the NBA right now doesn't make any sense to me. Wemby still being number one in the rookie power rankings doesn't make sense to me. No disrespect to the alien. I appreciate his physique. I appreciate what he's been doing. The Spurs have lost 29 games in a row. It's embarrassing. Chet Holmgren clears right now. Like there's no... I'm not trying to say that that means he's a bust. He's like 18 years and two days old. But at the same time, you got to give Holmgren his respect. Now, they'll age a little bit into their games, and who knows what will happen over the long term. But at the same time, you can't just be given the rookie of the year on pedigree alone. You know, you got to look at the stats. you got to look at the strength of schedule. you got to look at the mathematical calculations, okay? Wemby at center is better. Bro, yeah, he's better in every stat. Height, weight, wingspan. What about his, uh, his Corsi Plus? How's his Corsi? What's his Duolingo streak? Exactly. Has he received his Peloton wrapped yet? Because I haven't. Apparently everybody in Ohio got their Peloton wrapped already. I'm cooked, man. It's in your spam? No, I keep checking. I didn't either. I contacted support. It's got to be, <laughs> no disrespect. 
working in Peloton support has to be like one of the most annoying customer service jobs out there. People are, they paid too much for the bike. They pay too much for the subscription. They're all coming in with a chip on their shoulder. The shit breaks like now and then. Like I've just come to terms with it. I got lucky today. I didn't have to restart my bike a single time. But uh, like most days, I got to restart it maybe once. Maybe, maybe 0 0.8 times per day on average because it'll just stop like getting my metrics. Meanwhile, you got people jumping into support saying, hey, I haven't gotten my Peloton wrapped yet. They're probably still getting like customer support tickets over like, hey, I didn't get the badge for my turkey burn ride. How about this? I mean, I'll just tell you straight up. I think we're cooked on this one. I'm going to go sniping because I've been losing to snipers. The official Peloton Facebook group is so funny. I'm not trying to yuck anybody's yum, but every once in a while I go to the Peloton subreddit. It's don't go to r slash Peloton. It's written about 88% in Dutch. It's all about the Tour de France. And when the Tour de France isn't on, it's about less illustrious tours. The Tour de Italy, the Tour de Andorra, etc., etc. It's about regular, like professional cycling. But r slash Peloton Cycle is the Peloton subreddit. And there are people there, again, it's their life. I am talking, I'm doing this, I'm doing the Trump right now. It's their life. Um, but they post like an essay every day about their workout. They're like, I wasn't feeling that good today. So I started with a 10 minute focus flow hips to get myself warmed up. Like they're writing in full sentences. After the, the music on the, on the stretch was pretty good, but I did find that uh, doing the hip openers actually aggravated my abductors a little bit. Then I got on uh, 30 minute uh, Emma Lovewell Florence and the Machine Ride, and I found like the first three songs were pretty good, but after that it was just like they were reading off a Wikipedia article. And then I, after that I did a 10 minute uh, low impact, and I'm like, this is crazy. This is like the way that Shackleton wrote diaries when he was trying to get to the South Pole. But the stuff that he was writing is like three dudes froze to death today and we had to eat our sled dogs just to survive. And it's actually like there's more brevity than there is in the Peloton recaps just for like a random Tuesday. Okay, snail, not necessary. If we're sniping, give me a deer. It works with it. We don't have to snipe immediately. You know, we'll, we'll get into it as we go. Flying fish. This, this weekly has everything, man. Guy who's played the weekly twice. And you're kind of a sniper. But on the flip side, I don't respect you. Maybe I res... No, there, we've got better snipers if we can survive till the pivot later. Now, you're kind of like a stud. So welcome. You're kind of a stud. So welcome. And we're about to create the most annoying team of all time. Oh, son of a bitch. First bus loses? Make it make sense. I don't want it. I want it. Most annoying sound of all time. You guys want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? E Imagine being like a... Hungarian peasant circa <laughs> 1271. Oh! You're just out there toiling in the fields, farming like barley or whatever. The fuck was that? And then uh, who invaded Hungary in like the 13th century? Was that Attila?
There's like eight different answers, and I think they're like all right, which is crazy. The moops, of course. That's a long trip for the moops, to be honest. I do like an eagle. I do. Well, you can go and we can get an eagle out there. Okay. A medieval surf would die if they watch Dumb and Dumber. I know we've done this bit before. I think that we, as modern human beings, are giving ourselves too much credit for thinking that somehow we are stronger than, like, medieval peasants. Admittedly, the cultural stuff we watch is, like, so messed up. Because when you're, like, a medieval peasant, you might not even see, like, a piece of media in your entire life. You'd, like, sing songs to each other, I suppose. But at the same time, it's not like your ass was at the tavern. You were like working, sleeping, working, sleeping, working, sleeping, singing songs around the, the forever stew, right? So what we watch now is crazy. I don't think it would kill them. But at the same time, I think because we've achieved some degree of scientific enlightenment, it's pulled some of the wonder out the world. Like the medieval peasant seeing a lunar eclipse would be crazy or a, a solar eclipse would be insane. Nowadays, we're just like, oh, it's just uh, an object that's passing in front of the sun for three seconds. Don't look at it. Can you imagine not knowing that it was going to happen and looking up and seeing like the sun turn black? And then you got to live the rest of your life being like, remember that? What the hell happened? You'd be like, what should we do about it? Fucking go toil, brother. That's it. That's all there is to do right now. I think that we wouldn't last a day if we went back to the medieval era. I think it would blow my mind. Can you imagine like seeing a, a comet in the air, not knowing anything about the concept of astronomy at all? I don't think I'd be able to handle it, brother. I'd be in a rough spot at the very least. We'd be bored as hell. You know what's crazy? I think we'd probably get used to the boredom in like a year. Don't get me wrong, I think like the first couple months, you would be like, holy fuck, I want to look at my phone so bad. <laughs> but I bet like a year after it, you would be like, listen, I would go back to the modern times if you gave me a chance, but it's not that bad. Like, I think human beings are like really good at, at getting used to stuff for better and for worse. Very interesting what we've got here. Very interesting. Ostrich does go kind of crazy. Toad is so good at overriding equipment, though. And I'm introducing, like, the Ninja Turtles. They're the world's most fearsome fighting teams. They're heroes in a half shell. And get this. Because this one's a screamer, and they're green. I'll take that. Who's your favorite? Donatello, bro. It's not even like a debate. It's Donatello with a, with a bullet. It's Donatello. Then it's um, Michelangelo. Then it's Leonardo, and I did not like Raphael that much as a kid. I loved the Ninja Turtles, but I did not like Raphael that much. I'm going to go completely insane. Holy. I would even. I'll freeze you. We're rolling for based equipment. That's pretty based. <laughs> okay, is everything okay? Okay, it sounds like the cat threw up on a box that my wife was about to recycle. I will be right back.
Cats throw up more than people. Maybe you. Skill difference. I throw up all the time, bro. I throw up like six times a day. You could never live my life. I'm hoping to get it up to eight by the end of 2024. Last time I threw up was 24 years ago. Okay, that's actually crazy. The last time I threw up was on the Disney cruise. And that was, listen, 2006 to 2013 or so. So I wouldn't say there's a lot of vomiting in there. There were occasional once every year and a half, once every two years, alcohol-related vomiting incidents. But this throw up on the Disney cruise was like the first time I'd thrown up for like a non-alcohol-related reason since I was like 17 years old or something like that. And I was like, I forgot how much it messes with you. Did it feel good? It felt good when I threw up, but it took like 90 minutes of nausea until I threw up, which was horrible. No puking during Campylobacter? I told you, we're not built the same. I don't think there was anything to, to puke because I had diarrhea like once every 90 minutes. <laughs> I didn't throw up during the first norovirus either. I, I did get down on my hands and knees on the toilet for a while thinking it was going to happen, but it just never came to pass. I should be so lucky. Hold. This is not going to hold. To a hippo, to a hippo of all creatures. Throwing up better than diarrhea? Well, I'm sorry, the ugly guy. I don't have like a switch that I could flip. Why am I not freezing anything? Why I, I didn't even freeze that. Come on, man! Listen, I'll be straight up with you. I'm going four squatted because this eagle's not doing anything. I swear to you that my, my memory of this is that this is how this went down. Worst reason you've ever thrown up before. Once when I was like maybe 10, I threw up because I was hungry. I was staying at my grandparents' house and I woke up early. I was like starving for breakfast. Because as a kid, you eat like dinner at 5.30 or something like that. And then you go to bed at like 9 and you just sort of, you know, hold on until breakfast time. So I was at my grandparents' house. I didn't know where anything was uh, and nobody was awake. So I was just sitting there wa watching like, you know, Regis and Kathy Lee or whatever. And my stomach was like. Brrr. And then after maybe like an hour, I just went to the bathroom and threw up. And then my grandma was like, are you sick? And I said, no, I'm just hungry. She was like, have some toast. And I was like, ah, that's a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it's kind of crazy like um i spent a lot of time in my grandparents house as a kid because my parents worked and my grandparents lived <laughs> directly above us <laughs> so this is kind of like a duplex situation i guess it was our house but it was also their it was their partition in the house my grandma for breakfast she used to cut up like a banana put it in a bowl, and then she would put sugar on top of it. The composition of a banana is already 100% sugar. And she was like, you know what this needs? It's just like not quite sweet enough for me. Sugar banana is a classic. She was putting sugar on everything. She was putting sugar on like strawberries. Like they're already sugar. Sugar is just raw caramel. Corey, shouldn't you have been live like 75 minutes ago? What's going on here? <laughs> you 
You're like me shit posting when I should have been live 15 minutes ago. I'm talking in like uh, the Peloton sub community on the Discord about whether I would rather work from home or work in office. Saying insane stuff like, I think I'd rather work in the office if the commute is shorter, even though I've been working from home for like 15 years. Sorry, so I'll take my time here. Taking my time. Just moving on. You'll forget about me after I've been gone. Chocolate. You piece. Well, chocolate. Choc chocolate, thank you. Hold. I love lying about my personal life and my corporate job. <laughs> Can you speak on that a little bit? I don't really know. Son of a gun. I don't really know what you're talking about. Is it like when people ask you what you did on the weekend and like you spent it arguing online, but you say, I don't know, just relaxing mostly. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. All right. I understand that. The irony is actually that I, I sort of live. Um, it, it's not that I lead the most interesting life in the world. Like I would never say that. But I actually find myself, I did lie like that a lot when I was younger. You know, you're always like, I've got stuff to do this weekend. Oh, mo hanging out with friends. Meanwhile, I'm like playing Civ 4 in my underwear for like 10 hours, right? Now it's more like people will make small talk. Like a clerk in a retail situation will be like, do you have any plans for the rest of the day? I got plans for the rest of the day, but I lie and stay. I say like, no, we're just going to like head home. Because I don't want to have a conversation about like, oh, later today we're going to go see the Nutcracker or whatever. I don't like, it's more like, it's just, I don't think you're being rude at all, but it's not really any of your business, quite frankly. Like, I don't want to get in a conversation with you about the Nutcracker. They, I know you don't care, so I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to spin you. They're risen you up. That reminds me. Driving yesterday, we drove past, and it must be a, a new rebrand, okay? We drove past a vape shop. Um, the vape shop was called Vape Riz. And then it had, uh, the, the logo was like the Giga Chad, basically. It wasn't like a one-for-one -one copy of Giga Chad. But it was like the, the Wojak meme where the guy is turned sideways and he has the beard and, you know, like the, the haircut that was cool like five years ago before ramen hair became like the cool haircut. And the slogan was like uh, enhancing your enchanted memories or something like that. And I was like, man, this must have. This must have opened like two months ago. CEO of vaping in Ohio. You didn't go in. I've uh, I've never been inside of a of a vapory, and I don't I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. I've never been in a in a in a dispensary. I don't really know the difference between a vape shop and the dispensary. I killed my own hedgehog. I was so mad. I was incensed. One sells weed? Well, what do the vape shops sell? Vape shops only sell nicotine? What's the point? I should have just kept you around, brother. I don't know what's going to happen on this round. I guess I'm angling for a draw. Flavor? I don't, I'm just, <laughs> I don't want to get into it necessarily. You know it's bad for you, right? I'm like, you're, you're getting addicted to nicotine just so you can taste like cherry cobbler a couple times a day? Or like, I don't know, based on the frequency I see people vaping outside like a couple times a second?
you know people go from cigarettes to vapes, right? Well, yeah, people that are like 55. I thought most people nowadays, if you're like 20, you started because you're like, it would look fucking sick to be in the 10th grade and go like... And then afterwards, you know, you would be like, it's a little embarrassing that I'm huffing birthday cake at my corporate job. Then you convert to cigarettes. I thought like the flow got reversed at some point. Is this a real take? What, that nicotine is bad for you? Holy cow, is that a Game Awards badge? Is it Jeff Keighley? One day I'm gonna build a major Kusanagi mass auditing program and I'm gonna cross-reference and if I find out that any of you enormous aspartame haters are nicotine devotees, Oh, man, you're going to have... Well, it'll be the first debate stream we ever do. Let's put it that way. You will be invited into the call. But as soon as you start to gain the upper hand, you will be disinvited from the call. We're all going to die. This is not good. What are we doing here? You, you go at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Turns out one hedgehog is like a really good... And I, I just can't think of another word because I'm trying to resist the pun, but it's a really good hedge against a team that shoots at the strongest unit. Who would have thought? Don't plus to it. I want the minus twos for that. It's what it deserves. Nah, 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 I, I think we're cooked, honestly. You know what else loves aspartame? Your pancreas for not giving it diabetes. I, I didn't know you were a um, unnoted diet soda, Andy. Or at least a uh, respecter. I would have thought that you'd be one of those... Uh, just drink water, Justin's. You strike me as, um, as a, a practical individual. Like, you know, every can, like a, a 30 rack of diet or Coke Zero at Costco is like 40 cents a can. But that's basically when you apply the future value of cash, that's 44 cents a can. But then on top of that, that 40 cents invested into the S&P 500 if we get the same average res returns historically over the next 40 years, psh, I mean, it might double three times. It might double four times. So this could actually be like a $5 can of Coke Zero. I thought you would be like five bucks for a can of Coke Zero. That's not happening. When I can get water out of the tap for free or better yet, out of someone else's tap. Ah, uh, the value of me drinking caffeine is good. Oh, this, oh, I see why you, you found an interesting arb there, didn't you? Yes, you arbin son of a gun. Oh, we take this in a heartbeat. Could we go wolf? Could we go wolf on this one? Let's try going wolf on this one. He's big and he's bad. You know him. I don't know if we're wolfing or sniping or, or what, quite frankly. There's a ton of ARB in exploiting my body for money. Now you're getting it. <laughs> we're all cogs in the machine, brother. It's crazy that in the US you could sell plasma. If that existed in Canada, my ass would have been selling plasma like crazy, bro. I would have, if I qualified at least, I would have been selling plasma like as often as possible, 18 to 24, without a doubt. It sucks hard and it takes forever. I didn't have shit to do back then, honestly. 
you get even more for sperm donation. Yeah, but that's I think it's like a supply and demand thing. I think like the lineup for the sperm donation for money is too long. So they actually don't have to pay. If anything, they probably could reverse the market forces and start to charge people to donate sperm. People would be like, yeah, I'd pay 100 bucks to donate sperm for sure. Let me think about this. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't think I want it. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of doing a lot of rolling here. What's happening? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to commit to my spawning team. Sperm donation's weird. They ask you about your college education. I know, it is kind of crazy. But I guess, like, the other thing is, is, like, they don't have to be nice to the people donating sperm, right? They can be rude, because what are you going to do? Be like, I'm going to walk out? Oh, I'm going to take my precious sperm elsewhere. Bro, you make, like, a billion a day or something like that. Like, you got no power. The sperm bank has all the power. And if you think about it, you know, if you were taking a sperm donation, like if you were choosing sperm for your child, you might be selective too. You might not just be like, oh, just roll a D100, you know? You might be like, give me the Harvard sperm. If I got, if it's all, if it all is the same to you guys, sure, I'll take the Harvard sperm. It makes sense to me if I put myself in, in the shoes of someone who might be a, a consumer of the sperm bank. You can taste the difference? That's disgusting. Is that true though? Chat, is this real? Yeah, yeah, make a slug. And then this is a spawn build. Any chance there's, oh, that's not how you do it. I forgot how to even use this lad. What did he, what did he eat? Crocodile? At least it's got like decent stats. And this is what I need. Okay, it's all coming together. I remember, you know, you're like 17, 18. You're like, what am I going to do with my life? You're like, maybe I'll just be a sperm donor. Then you look it up and it's like, you need a, a 120 plus IQ. You need to exercise regularly. You need to uh, like never smoke, never drink eat a predominantly like organic food diet and you're like, fuck that, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm bald to begin with. Can I tell you, this is true, by the way. I swear it to you. I had a dream last night that I went bald and I don't know how to articulate it to you because I know that it sounds insane because I'm already bald. But I know that in my dream, I like, I knew in my dream that I was bald. It wasn't like I dreamt that I had like a cool head of hair. Like I knew I was bald, but I like was in a gas station bathroom or something. And I went like this in the mirror and I had like some wispy sort of hair here and a big bald spot in the middle. And I woke up feeling like fucked up like emotionally a little shattered. Like I, for about a minute after I woke up, I was like, I'm fucking going bald, bro. It was, it was a crazy dream. Like it, it played on my feelings, despite the fact that I've already gone through. It's the first time I've ever had like a bald trauma dream. It's so weird. It's also like, so our daughter's been like, a little sick so she's been sleeping in my spot on the bed and i've been sleeping on the couch just so that she can get good rest so i've been having weird couch dreams and i do still i i just suggest this if you ever find yourself sleeping on the couch number one tip i could give you i know i've said it before don't think oh i'd rather be sleeping on the bed think to yourself I'm on an airplane in first class, and this is a nice seat. 
I got a phone charger right next to me, Bluetooth headphones, comfy pillow. I can lay all the way down. There's a, a TV right there with anything I could ever want on it. There's a refrigerator, like a, my own private bathroom. When you, when you trick your brain into thinking that you're like on an airplane, you're like, man, this is pretty nice. It's like better than a bed. Unlimited drinks. Let me think here. Homegrown Simpson stuff. That one's for you, VIP Daniel. Homegrown Simpson stuff. Okay. Turkey, very important. Not that important. Quite important to at least get a spawner in here. Yes, thank you. Where are you going, though? Psh. Where? I don't know. Oh, that sucked. But wherever I go, I'm going to be freaking well rested by the time I get there. So we're crafting like the most annoying team of all time, but it's actually a detriment because it keeps losing. So actually we're being beaten by teams that I'm trying to annoy. So they probably feel like amazing that they're destroying me. Come on, just tell me oh, the turkey needs to live, bro. <laughs> what is this royal flycatcher? Holy. Alright, run it back. I'm gonna guess that Sine to Nurdle, not.